Welcome to the Path of the Yogin program. We are honored and excited to be stepping into this journey with you. In part one of this module, we focus on setting the stage for conscious change and implementing some key neuroscience tips to cultivate an inner and outer environment that is conducive for learning. We will explore how to land on clear direction, how to create and conserve energy and motivation, and how to utilize your environment to support you on the path of the yogin. As we open the door to this aspect of the program, this guided presentation of the content for each week, we encourage you to be spacious and gracious with your learning so you can ingest and integrate what is being offered. Allow sweet moments to pause, to feel and reflect, especially if you find yourself vacating your body or getting wrapped up in a flurry of thoughts. The path of the yogin is a journey inward and requires patience and a willingness to see and feel what may have been protected from your field of vision or simply unseen due to years or lifetimes of habit. Until we feel resourced, supported and capable to see what is lingering beneath the surface, our wise protective systems will keep things hidden. As we journey together, you will learn many tools for mental and physical strength training. And we encourage you to reach out with questions or requests for support anytime you feel more guidance would be grounding, enlightening, or nourishing. Remember, you have several hours of one-on-one -on -one time with us included in your tuition, which we have labeled as office hours. We hope you will reach out to initiate that connection. Through compassion, collaboration, appreciation, and patience, our system will unfold without force or fight. Our hope and purpose in creating this experiential program for you is to offer the safety, inclusion, and inspiration that is required to venture into the dark night of the soul, which opens us up to feel the true bliss, pleasure and privilege that is our aliveness. Remember to give yourself space to feel what is arising and moving through you and practice presence and curiosity as you reflect and ponder these concepts and lessons. Witness how they relate to you or change how you perceive in your own life. The path of the yogin is paved with deep, generous listening. And you are not alone on this journey. Let's begin. Before we move any further, I would like to formally introduce myself. The voice you are hearing for part one of this module is me, Marin. My passion in this life resides in the realm of mental well-being, nervous system regulation, breath work, and all the ways that one can increase their quality of life by knowing how their mind body works. This passion began from my own mental health struggles that plagued me incessantly from the time of my earliest memories to my mid twenties. What started as a heavy darkness that I thought would be the death of me transformed into what I like to consider to be my superpower. I've come to a place in my journey where I recognize that the most real things in life and the only thing that I actually have some semblance of control over is the space between things otherwise known as relationships. As many inspiring philosophers and wisdom teachers have professed, and I summarize here in my own words, the problem is not the problem. It's your relationship to the problem that is the problem. The study and practice of yoga has taught me how to connect more with the wise adult or higher self within me 
the part of me that is a reflection of source energy and the loving light of pure awareness. And it is from that place within that we can turn towards whatever or whoever is present and observe the world inside and outside as it changes. The space between flows with compassion and the calm and healing presence of love and light expands. At the time of my first yoga teacher training in 2014, with my now co-facilitator, Nora Maskey, my relationship with myself was so unhealthy and difficult to manage that I tended to do everything within my power to avoid it. I was in the grip of many addictions, all of which were coping mechanisms to manage the pain that I felt in every moment and in what seemed like every cell of my being. This pain was so overwhelming, confusing, and embarrassing. And at that point, I had not found any strategy or path that did anything more than momentarily relieve some pressure or distract me from what was always lingering, waiting for me. I stepped into my first yoga teacher training with the intention of following a nudge that I had felt countless times in moments of bliss during beautifully guided yoga experiences. I did not think I would become a yoga teacher and instead was focused on what I thought would be a life coaching career, not realizing how intertwined and inseparable these two paths would become. That yoga teacher training was a pivotal moment in my life as it led me on a path back to my aliveness. I have now moved through dozens of trainings and experiences that have guided me into the core of my suffering and unraveling of my pain and my struggles. It has taught me how to love my body, how to move in diverse ways, how to recognize when and how to be with myself when I am in need of being seen, heard, and loved. Ultimately, it has taught me how to include every part of who I am and to express this union through the lens of my open and expansive heart. Yoga, true to its name, has reunited my internal system and reunited me with the omnipresent essence and energy that permeates everything. I finally have consistent high quality thoughts and questions to focus on that continually steer me towards a lighter and more inspired mindset and a growing wealth of knowledge regarding how to move my body in nutritious and medicinal ways. My overcoming of my lifelong mental health struggle has left me with a burning passion to continue learning and growing and to share and support others, to be the self healers that we are all capable of being. What a gift. A commonly used metaphor in psychology literature describes the conscious mind as a human rider sitting atop a six ton elephant, which represents the subconscious or underconscious, a term that you will hear us use often throughout this program. This analogy illuminates two substantially different modes of processing in the brain and insight into the steps and process to get them to work together for the purpose of creating a smooth, efficient, and powerful trajectory towards the change we desire. In the book, The Happiness Hypothesis by Jonathan Haidt, he explains that the elephant is driven by instant gratification. And in a battle of wills, the elephant is obviously stronger. He says, quote, the automatic system, AKA elephant, has its finger on the dopamine release button. The controlled system, AKA rider, in contrast, is better seen as an advisor. It's the rider placed on the elephant's back to help the elephant make better choices." End quote. 
this analogy has become one of the most influential ideas I have encountered and continue to use to this day when I am creating programs, supporting clients, or pursuing change and growth in my own life. It speaks volumes to imagine your logical and rational brain as a human rider atop another brain that is a six-ton elephant. To generate a relationship between these two important systems, it requires patience, deep listening, unraveling of stored charges and triggers, some finesse, and a calm, soothing voice that expresses compassion and curiosity. When we are directed solely by our elephant, we are piloted by unreasonable and often historically driven emotion, chasing impulse and satisfaction without a clear path or trajectory. When our rider takes the lead, we can spin our wheels, overthinking every situation, relying heavily on cognition, exhausting ourselves with options until we have drained our energy and capacity to move forward. Our elephant has way more power than our rider. 40 nerve impulses per second in the cortex, which is the rider's territory, versus 40 million nerve impulses per second in the limbic system, or the underconscious, which is the elephant's territory. Throughout this program, you will learn how to pause, notice your habitual reactions, and engage in practices that support unity and awareness so that your elephant and rider work together harmoniously as your higher self emerges to take the reins. The higher self is an integral part of our exploration of yoga and will become more clear throughout our time together. Ideally, we want these two systems to work together as we enjoy the emergent properties of collaboration and balance. In the book titled Switch, Dan and Chip Heath detail the well-researched steps to do so. They say we need to motivate the elephant, direct the rider, and shape the path. When we slow down the change process to explore, tease out, and engage in these three steps mindfully, we access a powerful combination of the motivation and energy we get from the elephant, along with the clear direction and higher level purpose we receive from our rider. To motivate your elephant, we will spend some time exploring your why, to find the feeling that will be the fire and energy beneath your sustained engagement in this program. To direct your rider, we will point to where we are headed giving your rider a clear direction to navigate and steer your elephant. And to encourage this healthy relationship, we also need clarity in the steps and milestones ahead. This will include speaking to what to expect on this journey and how to set up your environment to make the path as smooth and supportive as possible. Let's dive deeper into why your why is so important. Dopamine is the neuromodulator that is released when we see and move towards what has been deemed as important for our survival. It gives us the energy we need to act and it rewards us with pleasure to encourage us to do it again. We can support this system by revisiting our why often connecting our actions and practices with a bigger purpose that is in service of our survival and well-being. Our why is our motivation, and motivation is felt as energy that makes effort, action, and practice a whole lot easier. Your elephant is a powerhouse where 95% of your affect, which is your sensation and mood, your actions and thoughts come from. Without getting your elephant on board, 
it doesn't matter how much knowledge or clarity you have. Sustainable change won't happen without the elephant's approval. The elephant wants instant gratification, or simply what feels good now, and is overwhelmed by big change. And it speaks in chemicals, not words. So in order to access the bounty in delayed gratification, our why needs to carry a visceral reaction so that the process of change and the occasional discomfort that comes along with it can be endured and maybe even enjoyed. We can support our elephant by writing out our why and revisiting it daily, especially in moments when resistance creeps in. We can also make this easier for ourselves by focusing more on the small steps we are consciously engaging in, rather than staying focused on the big change or how far we have to go. Celebrate small wins and implement a growth mindset by focusing on the goal of improvement, learning and practicing, rather than the illusion of perfection or imperfection, a final destination, or the need to prove your worth. You are worthy now. Let's pause here for a moment. Settle back into your chair. Move and shift in any way that allows you to feel a little more supported and comfortable. Perhaps even close your eyes. Relax into your breath and feel how it moves in and out for a few rounds. Notice what it feels like to open and receive the inspiration of your inhale and to fully surrender and let go as you exhale. Feel the support that is beneath you and within you. These pauses for reflection are an opportunity for you to check in and feel into what you need in this moment. Perhaps pausing the presentation for a few minutes to move around, go to the bathroom, or make a warm tea. There may be times when you feel inspired to put pen to paper, and we encourage you to allow that inspiration to flow until it feels complete. And other times, a few simple spacious and nourishing breaths will be all that's needed for you to feel reset and ready to continue on. In your homework document for each part of each module, you will find the same questions that we explore together in these presentations. We suggest you begin your review and contemplation in these opportunities to pause and reflect, and perhaps even open up your homework document to capture your thoughts there now. In the homework document for module one, part one, you will see some questions pertaining to your why, which are also reflected here. If you feel open and ready to dive in, take a few moments to pause this recording so you have space with these questions to explore what comes up for you. And give yourself space to feel and breathe in between bouts of writing. And then read over what you've written and feel the words move through your system. And then complete this exercise by framing your why in a simple statement as a heartfelt desire. So some prompts that will help you land on your why. Why did I register for this program?
what am I noticing as a recurring struggle in my life? Or curiosity. What would it feel like to wake up tomorrow morning without that struggle? I'm now going to read out some examples of how a why statement could be reframed as a heartfelt desire. And know that as we move through this module, we're going to fine tune this why. So this is an exploration, an experiment, something to play with as we unravel and discover the words that really land for you. So here are some examples of heartfelt desires. I desire to be more open and feel excited about my life. I want to feel more patient and curious rather than a feeling of lack and a tendency to react. I need to make more time for self-care and reconnect with my intuition. It's time that I make decisions that serve me and live the life I know I was meant to live. I feel the need for something new and want to get past the fear that holds me back. I am seeking answers, consistency, and optimal health and well being. What is your simple, heartfelt desire? To offer your rider clear direction, we will explore what yoga is and who the yogin is. We also discuss where we are headed and some key inquiries and inspiration to support you in the contemplation of your purpose. What is yoga? In Sanskrit, yoga means to yoke. Like all Sanskrit words, the translation is not clear cut and creates space for discussion, exploration, and experimentation. We will be diving into the purpose and meaning of yoga many times throughout this program because the felt experience of this concept, practice, and lifestyle will shift and it is important to continually circle back to the foundation to assess what feels different now. When we consider yoga as a means to yoke, it speaks to the union or reunion of our multifaceted layers and the process of inclusion to integrate as the interconnected beings that we are. On one level, this speaks to the fact that we are already connected and are deeply influenced by our relationships, including our relationship with self. And as we become more aware of this interconnectedness, we can untangle what is stuck, turn towards what we have turned our backs to, and get back into right relationship with the ever pulsive rhythm that is unfolding as presence in this moment. So who is the yogin? You may have heard the terms yogi and yogini many times, which are gender specific labels for one who is committed to the practices and lifestyle teachings of yoga. The yogin is the gender neutral term, the non-binary term, and provides a container of inclusion and fluidity that allows conversation and practices 
around the masculine and feminine without focusing on gender, sexual orientation, or identity. We are all a mix of masculine and feminine, and how that is expressed and experienced is part of the inquiry and exploration of the yogin. Yoga is often referred to as an eight-limbed path, as you will learn and experience more of as our journey continues. Each limb serves an important and unique purpose. And while we will differentiate each limb for you to understand, the journey is not complete until we integrate each limb and witness what emerges when each thread is woven together in a harmonious tapestry. The eight-limbed path leads us to our liberation. It is an ancient template or map to guide us safely and holistically back to union with source, a homecoming as we realize who we truly are, who we are beneath or prior to the stories, imprints and experiences of this life or past lives, and how to include all that we are, even what feels like opposites or contradictions, to unite our individual experience with our inner knowing that we are all one. So what is your purpose? In yogic terms, what is your svadharma? Svadharma refers to one's own purpose, duty, or true calling in life. Why is your unique wave in motion? The path to discovering your svadharma is not one led by your thinking mind. Your svadharma will unveil itself as you practice observing yourself cultivating patience and a willingness to stay open and feel what is arising, moving, and transpiring. Svadharma is not just about you. It is your connection to your deep inner wisdom that is your cosmic guidance that is governing all individuals and the universe in its entirety. The contemplation of your Svadharma asks you to think big and get curious about how your wave interacts with other waves and a deep reverence and trust that your wave matters. While we are united in a single purpose as one, we are each a unique wave in the ocean of source consciousness. Your wave matters and is in motion as your life experiences for a greater reason. Source knows itself intimately by way of the multitude of expressions and possibilities of each wave that manifests as life. Your struggles, patterns, history, and insights are all carving your unique wave that is an integral piece of the greater puzzle. Often what we see and feel as our weaknesses or greatest struggles in life are also our deepest strengths purpose, or superpowers. Let's pause here for a moment. Settle into your chair. Feel your posture and close your eyes if that feels comfortable and inviting. Allow a few moments to connect with your breath and feel how it moves with intelligence. Now gently guide your breath to slow down, to savor each moment a little more. And allow each exhale to drop out of you with a smooth, velvety release as you sink a little more into the support that is right here, right now.
for a few moments, notice what it is like to sustain total attention on your inhale and total attention on your exhale. And feel the rhythm that emerges like a ribbon that weaves your inhale and exhale into the tapestry of presence. And now allow a few moments to feel as you reflect on the question, what is your purpose? This is a big question. And we invite you to stay curious rather than assume that an answer is needed now. As I often remind myself, it is more important to sit with a high quality question than it is to come up with a quick answer. As your wave continues to be in motion, be willing to gather more data and information. Your purpose will evolve and become more clear as you ride the wave and surrender to the intelligence that is presence. What is your purpose? Now that we have explored the nurturance your elephant needs to access motivation and the clarity your rider needs to direct this wild and wondrous elephant, it's time to take a look at the path we are embarking on and ensure it is set up, ready and conducive to support our journey. In this section, we will discuss how the eight limbs will be used as a template or map, how to attune to our innate biological ultradian rhythm to support learning, and how the yamas and niyamas have been integrated to add depth and experiential learning as lenses to perceive through. Most scholars agree that the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, circa 100 BCE to 400 CE, are a compilation of texts from earlier yoga traditions. By the time of Patanjali, yoga as a system was already evolving and growing in India. In the Maitri Aniya Upanishad, circa 400 BCE, yoga was explained as a six step process, as breath control, pranayama, sensory withdrawal, pratyahara, concentration, dharana, meditation, dhyana, reasoning, tarka, and union, samadhi. Patanjali edited and expanded this into these eight limbs. Remember, as these are transcribed from Sanskrit, the translation has room for discussion, exploration, and experimentation. I have included and weaved a few of my favorite translations into each of these to give you an overview of the depth in each limb. The first four limbs are foundational for creating safety before we can move into deeper absorption into the psyche. We begin with the yamas. The yamas are five restraints or principles of internal and moral ethics for harmonious living and attitudes toward our environment. The niyamas are five observances or practices as individual precepts for internal harmony and attitudes towards ourselves. So another way to think of these first two limbs is a set of guidelines and practices that teach us how to take responsibility for ourselves. The third limb is asana, which is mindful movement or physical postures aligned with breath 
to curate the release of tension and trauma and to strengthen our resilience. Pranayama, this is conscious breath control for extending our life force and gaining the ability to shift nervous system states when needed. The last four limbs are for expanding consciousness and awareness with meditative absorption, which can only be done from a felt sense of safety, which is what we achieve from the first four limbs. Pratyahara. This is going inward. Traditionally referred to as the withdrawing of the senses or sensory channels from focusing on the external to illuminating the internal. In doing so, an alchemy takes place that lands the individual consciousness back into connection with source energy. As the senses are pulled back, we release the incessant desire, aversion, and grasping at the fruits of external stimulation. And instead, we turn towards the internal landscape with an ability to be with what is. Dharana, also known as mental concentration or sustained focus. When we are no longer in the flow of external stimulation and the subsequent wheels of karma, we access the still and quiet mind, freedom to choose, and more clear alignment with the unshakable inner stability that we all have. Dhyana. When dharana or concentration feels easy, absorption or meditation emerges. The field of awareness we now operate in is that of global awareness. We have now shifted from glimpses and brief encounters with our divine nature into a prolonged and sustained period of being oneness. And Samadhi, the final limb that brings us home to total absorption with source or the absolute. This is complete integration in body, mind, and soul. Here, we are harmony and unity as we have reunited with that from which we emerged from and are a part of while still inhabiting human form. In every module, you will experience content and practices that guide you along this eight-limbed path. To support your learning, we suggest you begin honoring one of your innate biological rhythms called the ultradian rhythm, pictured here. As you can see on the x-axis, there is time from 0 to 90 minutes, and on the y-axis, level of alertness. Your body naturally has an ideal of energy shifting from a gradual increase of alertness to a gradual decrease in alertness. This wave of increased alertness begins when you wake up in the morning and can be felt in the evening as you wind down for bed and every 90 minutes in between. We can use this innate rhythm to our advantage in our bouts of learning. We can start an ultradian rhythm when we step in to engage in focused, deep work or learning. And we do ourselves a favor by chunking our time in 90 minute increments, stepping away from our work at the end of that window to allow space for rest and relaxation before we move back into potentially another 90 minutes of work. When we do this, we are not fighting our nature and you will find that you have more energy and support from the inside out. We're not meant to be in effort all the time. And by honoring this imperative for rest and surrender, 
every 90 minutes or so, we actually get way more done and you will feel better as you do it. To support your understanding and embodiment of the yamas and niyamas as foundational aspects of the path of the yogin, we have organized each module to focus on one yama and one niyama, also in order of foundation towards expansion. Perceiving each lesson through the lens of a yama and niyama will not only be done so with an obvious description and invitation into contemplation, it will also act as a subtle theme that will become more obvious in reflection and group discussion. You can also expect the asana, meditation, and breathwork practices for each module to be taught with the yama and niyama weaved into the theme. So what is ahimsa? It is nonviolence or benevolence. To consider this yama as the first step or vital root to be in place on this path, recall the common adage, safety first. We are creatures of habit, and when we sense a hint of danger in our midst, our first reaction is programmed to be protective and in service of survival, often manifesting as fear-based, defensive, and emotional responses. At the subconscious or underconscious level, we are assessing whether to lean in or pull back five times per second. This appraisal of safety versus danger is happening constantly and generally is not detectable until we deepen our awareness and capacity to perceive what is going on at this primal level. The practice of nonviolence is the cornerstone to cultivating an environment that feels safe so that we can have access to the parts of our brain that can only be online when the danger signals do not outweigh the safety signals. It is important to note that lack of danger or threat cues is not the same as safety. Safety at the level of the nervous system is something special. It is the voice of a nurturing mother, the trust and bond we feel in a loving friendship or a warm, welcoming smile. When our system perceives more danger than safety, we can only think and behave in ways that we have thought and behaved in the past. We are reactive instead of responsive. There is no room for creativity, collaboration, growth, or healing when we are caught up in perceiving danger. And in fact, we are more likely to misread cues as threatening when we are in this survival state. The classic neuroscience supported fact is that we see what we believe. We can practice nonviolence by being compassionate in how we communicate and show up for others and for ourselves. By approaching ourselves and others with nonviolence, we support an environment of presence and calm so that we can engage without our reactive protective system dominating. Choose to be curious as you notice your reactions without assuming they are the whole truth. Choose to respond with grace, conscious higher level thinking, and a whole lot of heart. The safer we feel by engaging in practices of nonviolence, the easier it becomes to self-regulate and show up with our higher self compassionately and patiently leading our elephant. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, quote, nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon. It is a weapon unique in history, which cuts without wounding and ennobles the man who wields it. It is a sword that heals, end quote. What is saucha? It's purity, 
and cleanliness as the first niyama on this list of importance consider this quote from the book light on yoga as guruji uwak shares quote while good habits like bathing purify the body externally asana and pranayama cleanse it internally the practice of asanas tones the entire body and removes toxins and impurities caused by overindulgence. Pranayama cleanses and aerates the lungs, oxygenates the blood and purifies the nerves. But more important than the physical cleansing of the body is the cleansing of the mind and its disturbing emotions like hatred, passion, anger, lust, greed, delusion, and pride. Still more important is the cleansing of the intellect or booty of impure thoughts. The impurities of the mind are washed in the waters of bhakti or adoration. The impurities of the intellect or reason are burned off in the fire of svadhyaya, self-inquiry or self-study. This internal cleansing brings radiance and joy." End quote. If you are carrying what doesn't need to be carried, you are needlessly wasting time and energy. To be pure is to live simply and authentically. By removing clutter from our external and internal environments, we have space for expansion and healing. Trust that as space is created, the pieces will fit together without force. At the end of each part of each module, we have included questions and reflections to support you in reviewing and integrating your journey. We recommend that you complete it before proceeding to the next module. We view homework as a tool, not a rule. We know that a healthy brain and nervous system is a flexible brain and nervous system. And with that in mind, we trust that our homework prompts will be supportive in giving some structure, direction, and ideas for you to play with, while knowing that only you know what is best for you. We encourage you to experiment with what we offer and get creative whenever you feel the winds of inspiration guiding from within. If you feel the energy and space available to begin reflecting, contemplating, and writing, you will find a list of questions in your homework document for this part one of module one. I'm going to read the questions out for you now, and I invite you to press pause between each question to explore what comes up for you. What are the eight limbs of yoga and how do they shape and support our yoga journey? Yoga means to yoke. We are already intertwined in the universe and with those around us. What are three ways in which you can create connection and foster your awareness of this concept in daily life? Describe Ahimsa and Saucha in your own words. What ways do you currently apply these principles to your life? And where do you see room to improve or apply them?
what ways can you practice ahimsa as you navigate this program? And saucha can be a daily ritual. What areas do you need to purify to fully embrace this program and journey? And now coming full circle, return to the beginning of this module and reflect on your why. It's time to write a clear why statement on a separate piece of paper and place it somewhere you can see it and read it out loud daily. Why are you on this journey in this program? That is all for now. Blessings on your journey.